In part four of the LED strip light installation project, I'm going to do the actual installation. On this project, I'm going to just use VHB tape without any of the mounting channels. I'm doing a preparation now for the LED strip lights. And basically what I did is I took a 16 foot, five meter long strip light and cut two four and a half foot sections out of it, which are here and here. Then I peeled off the old double-sided tape because it's not all that great and then I replaced it with VHB tape. Also I soldered directly to the pads on the strip. Now soldering directly to the pads takes a little bit of finessing and it is a little bit difficult to do I'll admit. But on the other hand it makes the smallest connection. And if you can't do that or if you don't want to do that you can buy these adapters and basically the way they work is you just take your LED strip and just put it in there and press it down like that and that'll make the connection so you can do that as well and then I use some silicone conformal coating to waterproof it and to kind of help give it a little more rigidity and you just paint that on the end as part of the LED light project I have to put a switch box into the front of the coach so that I can turn the switch on and off and it just so happens that it's going to be convenient to also locate the TPMS repeater switch in the same uh, box so this is kind of a redundant uh, video a little bit now this box here is a Bud CU1937 and it's uh, a fairly small box and it does have mounting ears and the front panel comes off and I've got a couple of screws here to secure the front panel. And then I've got these two glands, what I call glands. And basically what they are is uh, feed-throughs for wiring. And you put the wiring in there and then you tighten this down over it. And I'm going to put one in the top and the other one in the bottom. And that's how I'm going to get the wiring in and out of this box. And I also have two nice little switch logos that I got from Carolina Laser. And they're self-adhesive. And I'm going to put both of those on the front of the panel like this so that you can see which switch is which. I also have a single pole single throw switch which is on off and I also have a single pole double throw switch which is on off on. And the reason for that is, and I'll get this into this a little bit further, but I want to have the ability to have a blue LED strip or a white LED strip. And finally, I've got a diode that I have to put across the switch, and I'll just solder the diode on. And I'll explain this fully, but basically what this does is it allows me to use a RGB light strip with a two-position switch and get just white and blue out of it. So I'll explain how that works. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill the two holes for the switches, put these labels on and then uh, put these in, drill two holes, put these in and then I'll show you what the uh, finalized box looks like. Now I finished the switch box and I think it came out really pretty nice. Uh, I had to take my time to make sure everything was all aligned and such. Now one thing that's kind of an oddity is on the back side this actually goes to the ground side so I'm switching the different grounds and that's just the way that the LED light strip is wired. So you just have to remember that when you wire this up. The fuse, the fuse will still go on the positive side though. And here is the box base with the two glands for the wiring. The wiring comes in here and of course goes out there. And then the box just uh, snaps together. And then when I'm done I'll put four screws in that came with the box to secure it. And this is a circuit for the two switches. Uh, the TPMS booster is pretty straightforward. It's just an on-off switch that goes from 12 volts and turns it on or off. The LED circuit though is a little more complicated. If you follow plus 12 volts DC up and over to the LED strip, you'll see that the plus is actually common and it feeds the red, green, and blue LEDs. And the path from ground in the LED lights, if it is in the white position, will connect the red and green LEDs to ground. 
and it'll also connect the blue LED to ground through another diode. You can think of it as a one-way valve. It'll allow the current to flow when it's in the white position to the blue LED, but it will not allow the current to flow in this position from this side to the red and green LEDs. So that's the trick I'm using to turn on just the blue LED or all three LEDs, which gives you white. So now we've got the switch wired for the TPMS system and for the LED light strip. And this is going to go next to the fuse panel. And now I have the fuse panel finished. The fuse block is here and is wired up to the box up here. And the box, of course, is got the TPMS switch and the LED light strip switch. So here's the location of our LED strip and I'm going to run it one side over here and then one side over on that side. So this whole front end will be lit up. Well, I finally got the LED strips up. I was having some issue with them staying put. Uh, gravity is just working against me. So what I did is I actually had to put a couple small clips on here to help hold it until actually once it completely adheres in 24 hours it'll be okay. And these little clips, I got three of them, one here, one there, and one here near the end. They will stay there, they're not that bad looking. And then I just dabbed on the end just a little bit of 3M5200 on both ends. And that will secure and anchor the ends. And it's not so much that you can't get it off if you have to. So now if I turn this on blue, then we've got blue on our lights. And turn this to white, then now we have white. So at nighttime, this is what it looks like with the blue light on. So it gives us plenty of night light if we're coming up to the coach at night. Uh, so they don't run into anything. Actually, I think it looks pretty good. And with the white light on, it gives me a little bit of uh, illumination underneath the front end. Uh, so if we have to do anything out here at night. Now the coach does have a light in the front, which is a hitch assist light, as I've turned it on here. Which will illuminate the forward part of the hitch, but it won't illuminate anything underneath the uh, front end of the nose. 